okay hello everyone in this video lecture we will uh, see what is the analogy between transport processes uh, which is the last topic of uh, unit 2 mass transfer so we will be understanding or uh, trying to understand the difference or similarity between three different transport phenomena or three different transport processes momentum transfer heat transfer and mass transfer let's go ahead and look at it the analogy i have broken down into different aspect let us look at them one by one and i have put up three columns here one for momentum transfer one for heat transfer and one for mass transfer so equivalent terms uh, the common something that's common i put it in the first column that's analogy let's look at the transport mechanism that we name or how do they equivalently behave in momentum transfer we call it as viscous flow equivalently we call it in heat transfer as conductive heat transfer the equivalent in mass transfer we call it as molecular diffusion in all three cases the molecular motion is important in the momentum transfer we call it as turbulent flow an equivalent we call it as convective heat transfer in heat transfer and mass transfer we call it as convective mass transfer so the convective currents the flow is very important the velocity becomes more predominant in these cases the molecular transport equations the first one the molecular transport equations that we use in three cases if you observe it in all three cases flux the first left hand side term is flux the flux is directly proportional to the gradient and if you see the gradient that gradient is the driving force of this process du by dx the change in velocity uh, is the momentum transfer gradient dt by dx temperature gradient and uh, concentration gradient is for the mass transfer so the gradient always decreases means higher level to lower level so that is why you get negative sign in all three cases the constant that you get is the uh, constant of uh, that particular flux equation uh, here it is the newton's law of viscosity and here you have the fourier's first law of heat transfer heat uh, thermal conduction and here you have the fixed first law of uh, molecular diffusion the molecular properties are defined as momentum diffusivity thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity and it is related to these equations if you see it here it is dab for heat transfer it is k by rho cp density and specific heat and for momentum transfer it is mu by rho mu by rho here it is called as kinematic viscosity as a unit of meter square per second this thermal diffusivity has a unit of meter square per second the mass diffusivity has a unit of meter square per second if you observe all three of them have the same unit another analogy let me say about uh, the turbulent condition that is convective flow so under turbulent condition the uh, flux will be equal to the diffusive and eddy currents it's called as eddy currents here also the rho cp alpha and epsilon they are all called as turbulent flow the in the case of convective current this turbulent currents is zero this is a complex complex one compared to the previous one that is molecular diffusion when you come to the molecular diffusion the second term goes zero you can observe it carefully so the second term eddy diffusivity goes zero when you talk about molecular diffusion in the case of convective current under turbulent condition molecular diffusion and convective current both will be taking place it's not that only convective current is present there both will be taking place but the dominant one is convective current the dimensionless number that are important that we generally use to define these transport processes is uh, Reynolds number in this case of momentum transfer that is turbulent force divided by viscous force the second one is Nusselt number in heat transfer which is convective heat transfer to conductive heat transfer the third one in the mass transfer is the Schmidt number the Schmidt number is convective diffusion to molecular diffusion something that you see commonality between three things here is look at the numerator the numerator is convective transfer the denominator is molecular transfer so the convective transport to the molecular transport the ratio you denote it as Reynolds number or Nusselt number or Schmidt number in other words if I say high NRE it's more turbulent when I say Nusselt number is very large it means convective current is very large when I say Schmidt number is very large convective diffusion is more predominant the other way around 
when i say nr is very low or nusselt number is very low or schmidt number is very low it means the denominator is predominant the denominator is molecular motion that is molecular momentum transfer molecular level heat transfer that is conductivity transfer molecular level diffusion so these are the three commonalities between the dimensionless numbers comparing all three things all equivalently reynolds has come up with the uh, osborn reynolds he has come up with the reynolds analog his own analogy and he uh, defined a number called a stanton number the stanton number is equal to it is relating three things you observe it here nusselt number reynolds number and a prandtl number this prandtl number is present in all three transport phenomena that is uh, cp mu by k so the prandtl number uh, the nusselt number divided by product of reynolds and prandtl number is equal to f by 2 this f by 2 is nothing but friction factor so fanning's friction factor we had uh, in momentum transfer that fanning's friction factor f by 2 it is related to the stanton number so f is a dimensionless constant equivalently a modified version of this called as colburn analogy it shows stanton number multiplied by npr power 2 by 3 that is prandtl number 2 by 3 is equal to f by 2 this is a modified version of uh, reynolds analogy for applying uh, the particular cases so these are the two important analogy that comes in uh, transport phenomena for more details you can refer uh, standard chemical engineering books on the, uh, on transport phenomena which i'll be putting it up in the um, uh, additional studies i mean additional readings later the important one another molecular transport under unsteady state whatever you seen earlier is a steady state condition for an unsteady state condition you have three equations which are equivalent in momentum transfer we call it as navier stokes equation one dimensional only it is considered here it's three dimensional in fact we are considered one dimensional here. for heat transfer we call it as fourier second law mass transfer we call it as fick's second law of diffusion so the equation if you observe the gradient which is making the transport process flow that is velocity here temperature here concentration gradient that term is a function of time and space function of time and space in all three cases so that's the unsteady state it changes with the time it changes with the space the equation you write here is the first derivative of that gradient that term that concentration or velocity or temperature and the second derivative of this space you get a constant mu by rho you get alpha and you get dab they are all diffusivities you call it as momentum diffusivity thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity so these three terms are having the same unit meter square per second mu by rho kinematic viscosity or it's called as momentum diffusivity alpha it is uh, k by rho cp that is a thermal diffusivity dab it is a mass diffusivity so these are the three important relation for the unsteady state condition so we have come to the end of uh, unit number 2 mass transfer we have seen in the part 1 uh, mass transfer fundamentals we have basic of uh, mass transfer concept we have learned there in the second part we have seen the diffusive mass transfer and related certain equations and uh, uh, understood some experimental methods to find the diffusivity of gases and liquids in the third part we have seen the convective mass transfer we have related kla kga they are the mass volumetric mass transfer coefficient we have found the methods to estimate the mass transfer coefficients then in the last part we have seen uh, mass transfer in bio reactor where we have seen uh, option uptake rate option um, transfer rate kla values how to estimate kla values experimentally and theoretically and now we have seen the analogy between three processes momentum heat and mass transfer so this is the end of unit number 2 the unit 2 mass transfer ends over here thank you